Algebra 1, Final Spiral Study Guide for Semester 1, Part 2. This cell will cover numbers 20 through 32 on the study guide. On number 20, we're given the function f of x equals 5x minus 12. We need to find x when f of x equals 13. So you're going to plug in 13 for f of x to get the equation 13 equals 5x minus 12. We need to solve for x, so let's start by adding 12 to both sides to get 25 equals 5x. Then divide both sides by 5 for the answer x equals 5, choice A. On 21, we're given f of x equals 5 times 3 raised to the x power. What is f of 2? So that means we're going to plug 2 into the function for x. So that will look like 5 times 3 raised to the second power. 3 to the second power is 9, so we get 5 times 9, which is 45, choice C. On number 22, the table below represents parts of a linear function. So when x equals 3, what is the value of y? So remember with a linear function, as x increases steadily, y will increase or decrease steadily. So my first increase on x is 1, and then my first increase on y is 6. So that means for each increase of 1 in x, I need to increase 6 from y, uh, in y. So my next increase in x goes from 1 to 3, so that's 2. So I need to increase 6 for both of those, so 6 and 6. So I'm going to increase 12, which will give me 18. And then I'm just going to check. So my next one, my x's are increasing 1 from 3 to 4, so my y's should just increase 6, which they do. So the correct choice here is D, 18. 23, what type of function is represented by the table? So first we'll make sure that our x values are increasing or decreasing steadily. That way we can compare our y values. So for a linear function, we're going to check first differences to see if they are the same with our outputs. So with our y values, to get from negative 5 to 20, we need to add 25. To get from 20 to negative 70, we need to subtract 90. So right away, I can tell that my first differences are not the same, so this is not a linear function. So now I'll check second differences for a quadratic function. So to get from 25 to negative 90, I have to subtract negative 115. To get from negative 90 to 390, I have to add 480. So second differences are not the same. So that is not a quadratic. So now exponential, I am looking for a multiplier. So from negative 5 to, negative, to 20, I need to multiply by negative 4. And then if that pattern continued, I would multiply 20 by negative 4 to get negative 80, but that's not the number I have. So this table is not exponential, so it is none of these. On number 24, we're given the sequence that a sub n equals negative 7 plus 2 times n minus 1. So we're going to determine the nth term in the sequence. So we're going to plug in 7 everywhere we see n. So a sub 7 equals negative 7 plus 2 times the quantity 7 minus 1. Then on the right side, we're going to distribute the 2. So we'll get negative 7 plus 14 minus 2. And then if we just do that math, a sub 7, the seventh term equals 5, which is choice b. On 25, we have the sequence a sub n equals negative 2 times 5 to the n minus 1. We want to determine the third term. So we're going to plug in for 3 everywhere we see an n. So a sub 3 equals negative 2 times 5 to the 3 minus 1 power. So simplifying, a sub 3 equals negative 2 times 5 to the second power, or a sub 3 equals negative 2 times 25 or a sub 3 equals negative 50, which is choice B. 26. The table shows the distance D in miles traveled by a car after T number of hours. What is the rate of change in miles per hour? So if you look at the time, um, we go from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7 hours. So that's increasing steadily by 2s. 
And then the distance goes from 60 to 180 to 300 to 420. And so that is also increasing steadily by 120. So that means our rate of change is 120 miles for two, every two hours, or the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. And that simplifies to 60 miles per hour, choice D. In number 27, the graph of y equals negative 2x plus 5 is shown. If the y-intercept of the graph becomes 9, which statement would be true? So I've written that equation here. If our y-intercept is 9, our slope would still be negative 2, so that means that line would be not be steeper or flatter. It will simply have moved up to where y, um, the y-intercept is 9. So our choice is C. On number 28, we want to write... Um, a line, well first of all, a line passes through the point 3, 4. So 3 is our x and 4 is our y coordinates. And has the slope of negative 2. Write an equation of a line. So the two things we need to know are the slope, which we already know. So you can write m equals negative 2. We need to find the b value. So you're going to use y equals mx plus b. You're going to plug in 4 for y, negative 2 for m, and 3 for x, and then solve for b to find that b is 10. And I've written it over here. Now you can write your equation of your line just plugging in the negative 2 and 10 um, for m and b. And so the correct answer is d, y equals negative 2x plus 10. On number 29, we need to identify the slope of the line that's perpendicular to um, the linear equation 3x minus 5y equals 11. So the first thing you need to do is to put that into slope-intercept form to see what the slope is. So subtract 3x from both sides and then divide by 5y. When you do that you'll see that the slope is positive 3 fifths. So a slope that is perpendicular to that one will be an opposite reciprocal. So that means it'll be negative and then you need to flip the fraction so negative 5 thirds, choice C. On number 30, we're asked to make a scatter plot of the data, and we're going to choose the correct plot below. So we're just going to start with our points, and we're going to look at the point 1, 4.1. So right away, I can see that I can eliminate A, because I don't have a point around there. B, I can keep in the running, and I can C as well. So now I'm going to look for the point 511. So 511, this looks good here. And same, actually, graph C has the point 510. So I'm going to check one more point of point B. Actually, I'm going to check them all. So 2, 5.6, 2, and yes, that's about in the right location. 3, 7.4, yes, and 4, 9.1. So check the location of the points and the graph that has them in the right spot, that is your answer, which is choice B. We're going to do the same thing on 31 as we did on 30. Make a scatter plot of the data they're made for us. We're just going to choose the correct one below. So first I'm going to look for my first point, 0, 1. Right away I can eliminate A, because I do not have a point there. Um, I can also eliminate C. So I'm just going to check my other points on graph B. So I've got the point 1, 2, and that looks good. I've got the point 2, 4, yes, 3, 8, and 4, 16. So these all are in the correct location. So B is the scatter plot that I'm looking for. On number 32, from the scatter plot below, which equation would best represent the line of best fit given in the data. So I have gone ahead and drawn a line of best fit. I'm going to first look at two things. I'm going to look at the slope and the y-intercept. So my slope here, as I look at the graph left to right, is rising. Um, I have a positive correlation. So right away I'm going to eliminate my um, answer choice that has a negative slope. I also see, now I'm going to look at my y-intercept. 
that my line would cross somewhere around positive 1. So I'm going to eliminate um, C, which has a y-intercept of negative 1. And now I'm going to focus on my slope. So notice my scale. So I've got 1. So I'm going to go here, and I look um, with my slope how far up I have to go. So if I move up 1 here to get to the where the points are and my line is drawn, then I need to go over 1, 2. So let's try that again. Up 1 and over 1, 2. So that means my slope is approximately 1 half, not 2 over 1. So B is going to be the best choice for a line of best fit. <clears throat> that concludes um, our study guide review. So just study hard for our final spiral exam of semester one, and I know that you'll do great.